Um, oh, where did it begin? Um, I'm deciding to do this stream, um, not for, not, not saying that I need to explain myself to anybody or, um, uh, let my news out there. I don't, I don't know what I'm trying to say. I'm. I want to say my experience with um, what has happened recently, which is in the title, um, because I think in some way, maybe, hopefully I can help someone understand or maybe not freak out as much as I did in that instant. Um, I guess I can start from the beginning. Um, Monday night, I had a pretty serious uh, mental breakdown. Um, to the point of thoughts of suicide and or just harming myself. Um, I don't have these mental breakdowns too often, but I th they do happen, unfortunately. Um, I have a husband that um, has been extremely supportive through um, this extremely difficult time in my life. And um, he was there for me um, to support me in that moment. Um, I didn't tell him how I felt because How can you, right? <laughs> to tell your loved ones that you wanna, that you're thinking these bad things about yourself. I, um, we were in bed lying there while I was just crying a lot. Oh, we'll go with that. Um, and he was there the whole time with me. My thoughts at that time was whenever he left that room, which I was hoping he would because I told him I was going to take a nap, that I had plans to, I don't know, um, hurt myself in any way. Um, it was a bedroom. It didn't have much to go with. Um, I just wanted the physical pain. And I know that some people might agree with me in these times when you're going through shit. Um, hurting yourself kind of makes it feel better. Like, you feel like you deserve all the pain that you're getting. And as much as it sucks, it relieves a little bit of it. Um, yeah. So, I have like a club thing next to my bed for self-defense because I'm paranoid. <laughs> And I was planning on using that in any way of just beating the shit out of myself, pretty much. Um, so I told him I was going to take a nap, and he did not leave. <laughs> um, yeah, he, he didn't go. 
So we both ended up taking a nap together. Um, we got up later that night, ate something, and I went back to bed. Um, uh, not that, that that was the end of it, it was just, that's how it was. And um, the next morning, I still could feel it, like this... Um, if I could say, the best analogy I could say I, I w would be like, there's a balloon, and um, anything can pop it because it's that fragile, you know? Um, yeah, so I was in that mood. I still felt it, that I was not well I um, got on here to stream and I had a great time I was having fun to the most of my ability because I think I do have fun when I'm on stream and playing games um, but I, I had a therapy appointment and um, the therapy appointment did not go as well as I hoped. Um, it I don't I told her how I thought of those things and my plans of doing them because that's what you're supposed to do when you see your therapist because it's always a lot easier to talk to somebody outside of you know your love circle um so she asked me a, a simple question at that time, which I was crying already because, I mean, who wants to talk about things that they're thinking about doing to themselves to somebody else? It's hard. And, um... Um, she asked me a question on... A rate of 1 to 10. It was weird. Um, how likely would I have those feelings or hurt myself that day? Which was Tuesday. <laughs> um, and I told her I did. I don't know. My mood is changing constantly. At one point, I can be very happy, and then the next, it all crumbles, and I couldn't. I gave her an eight because I'm like, I can't give you a solid ten because I don't know what the future holds, and I don't know how my brain is going to react. Um. So she said I had to get admitted um, because of that, and it's because it's protocol, which I understand. Um, uh, the thing is, I I don't know. Um, I've had my mental disabilities for a very long time for more than half of my life now and my one fear is being in a psych ward because I feel like it just validates that I'm not 
I'm not normal, right? Um, so we gather our things. Um, I bring my meds and we go to the hospital. Um, all I can do is cry now because I'm scared. I don't want to be admitted. The last thing I want to be is away from my husband, who I rely on a lot, and I wouldn't be here without him. And they took me in, and I was just... I was so distraught, you know? It's scary. And I wish at that moment I hugged him more. Okay, um, so they take me in the back, and of course there's a big bodyguard um, behind me the whole time. Um, when we get to the section that I'm supposed to be in, um, of course everything's like locked, and I mean it's safety, it's hot hospital stuff. So um, they make me sit down and uh, take my vitals and ask me what kind of medications I take, which is a lot. Um, they um, asked why I was there, and I said my therapist told me that it was protocol for me to come down here because I was having thoughts of suicide or harming myself um, the day before. And they're like, okay. So, um, after doing that, they're like, we're going to get you changed. <laughs> and I freaked out because I was like, am I getting admitted already? I'm not even, I, you know, no one's telling me everything like step by step. I haven't done this before. And I guess it's, um, protocol that, um, they need to remove everything from you um and place you somewhere and then evaluate you with you know none of your belongings pretty much um so uh there goes the underwear and bra which i thought was interesting but i guess you could use this some way to hurt yourself or hang yourself i guess um they um they want, uh, there was a nurse there to make sure that I was taking off everything and I didn't hold anything on me, um, as I left the changing room, which they gave you a terrible shirt and the worst pants I've ever felt in my life, um, and some socks so you don't get shoes, um, uh, I left the room, and they told me to get rid of my hair clip, which was fine, and my wedding ring, which was hard. Um, but I stepped through a metal detector, and we start walking to my room, and there's a lady sitting um, on a chair outside of her room, I'm guessing? It was in the hallway. But she was definitely not well and kept saying get out and looking at me and saying get out which was not reassuring obviously the nurse said pay her no mind but you know it's kind of hard to not not get spooked um there was a uh, uh, I don't know how to explain it. Um, I guess like in prisons, maybe they have like a section where there's like a whole bunch of monitors and it's like glass and there's like a security guard so they can watch every buddy. Like uh, it's multiple uh, monitors to watch all the patients in. So that was right there. Um, they put me in a room 
and uh, gave me a blanket and said, wait for the doctor. Um, in the room, there was a, I don't know what the right word is, it's stretcher or gurney. It's um, the ones they use for like um, ambulances to roll them or in the hospitals to roll patients. It was a small one. Um, that was the only thing in the room. Uh, so I just sat on that the whole time. Uh, I was in there for a bit. Um, so of course you cry a little bit because you're like, fuck, right? Um, and then you start to notice, you know, your surroundings. Um, there is no, there's, you can't, the, the lights are on, but you can't see anything outside. There's a very big, heavy door. Um, no peephole or anything. Uh, the walls are white. The, the ground is hard. There's no, like, carpet or anything. Um, you just have that gurney and you just sit there. And I, I understand why there's not other things in, um, in the room because it's to make sure nobody hurts himself and I understand that and might I add that everybody was very kind um, when I ever did have interactions with them which was very sparse um, but um, yeah you know when you're sitting there for as long as you do um, you start to notice things right um, the walls have like damage, you know, like cracks in them that they try to cover up with caulking because obviously someone did something. And you notice the metal door has huge dents in them because someone was trying to get out. Um, it's a hard thing to just sit there and wait without like I don't know um, not knowing you know like is this is this it you know what I mean like cuz I don't know any better on these situations um, so they a doctor came in um, uh, checked to see if I was breathing fine, which I was, I was, or checking my heartbeat, I'm sorry. Um, he asked me why I was there, and I told him the exact same thing that I told the nurse, that it, my therapist wanted me to come here because it was protocol, because I was having feelings of suicide and hurting myself the day before. And he said that that was good, and that um, I was most likely getting admitted, um, and I was like, can I just see my husband before, before you guys admit me? Oh, sorry. They said, yeah, it shouldn't be a problem, so it was something to look forward to. Um, he said the next thing that would happen would uh, uh, be a psychiatrist that would come in to evaluate, um, to evaluate me, pretty much. And, um, he left, um... God, I feel like I waited 
maybe half an hour, 40... It's so hard to tell time in there, because there's no clock or anything. Um, and it's just the light in your room, you can't see anything outside. Uh... <sighs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Um, so, um, he, um, I saw him like maybe 30 or 40 minutes after I arrived in the room. Um, it feels like everything is a lot longer when you're in there. Cause, yeah, you can't tell time. Um, f uh, God, it felt like a while till the psychiatrist uh, got in. And um, I had enough time to calm down at that point, I think. Because, yeah, it just staring at white walls and trying to make faces and the stupid cracks in the walls you know you get time I guess um, I wasn't crying as much I, w uh, I was more coherent at that at that moment when he came in they did a whole bunch of uh, blood tests so that was fine I'm used to that um, but he asked me who my doctors were and what medications I was taking, which I told him that's the same stuff that I'm like that I told the nurse that was next to me drawing my blood. And he was like, "So why are you here?" And I told him same thing that I've been telling everybody else, and that it was. I told my psychiatrist I had thoughts of suicide and plans of hurting myself on Monday so the day before um, and she asked me if I was able to promise her that I couldn't I wouldn't have these thoughts or do any of those things and I couldn't promise her that because my moods have been so uh, like a light switch um, going back and forth um, which sucks <laughs> uh, I told him about um, my my history of problems that I'm going through since mid-February about the major fatigue and complete crap mood so that's the reason for the continuously more and more medications that I have on um, and I he asked me did I feel like I was gonna hurt myself um, today and then I told him I'm gonna be completely honest with you I don't know cuz it's the same answer. My moods have been back and forth. I can't tell you. Right now, I'm fine. Later, I might not be. And I can't tell you either or. it. Something can just trigger it and I'll have a breakdown. Um, which... But I told him... I will do a lot worse in here if I can't see my husband because that would be very unhealthy for me because I rely on him so much um so he asked if my husband was there and I told him yeah he's in the waiting room he said, okay, uh, I'm going to go talk to him, and then I'll be back. Uh, he left, 
And, you know, the great thing about these stupid big doors, or just that damn area is very echoey, I don't know, but you can he absolutely hear everything that's happening. So I can hear the patients, I can hear the security guards, I can hear the nurses, I can hear keys and footsteps and the doors being unlocked. Um, uh, he left, closed the door. I could hear the guy that was on the monitor, monitoring, monitor, monitoring all of the patients. So he said, uh, so, um, she's going in. And then I heard the psychiatrist say, uh, probably not, which I was very excited for. Um, so, um, at this point I just waited. Um, he told me he was going to go talk to my husband. And I was thinking that whenever he came back, I would be able to go. Um, I would say another 30 to 30 minutes to an hour another nurse came in and said they needed to do a redraw of one of the blood tests which was fine um kind of clumsy <laughs> for someone to he had all of his equipment put it on the side of the bed uh, and realized he forgot something and left the room so the security card comes over to me and then looks through all of the stuff that he brought to make sure it wasn't anything that could harm anyone or me the guy comes back and I'm guessing he forgot the needle um, he draws my blood on my good vein, which I have one that I prefer people to use most of the time. Um, and it was going fine towards the till the ending. Uh, he definitely a new nurse or not knowing or flustered, I'm not sure, but he started to shove the needle more and more up my arm, um, which was painful. Um, and after taking the blood, he pulled out the needle and blood sp sprayed everywhere. Um, it was on my blanket and on the gurney itself. So, um, they bandaged me up and he took that and walked away. Um, it it was a nurse it was yeah it was yeah sucky so um I don't so now I'm in a white room sitting on a god damn it what is it a stretcher or a gurney I think it's a stretcher and now there's blood on half of my gurney stretcher fuck um so I'm now sitting on the bottom half of it trying to be away from it and um, I'm just sitting there waiting and I hear more patients come in and leave and more patients come in and are very loud and um, definitely not well and it's unfortunate to hear because you don't want to hear people in pain um, but um, I waited a very long time in that room and nobody came um, the security guard came into the room and asked did you see the psychiatrist and I said yes uh, he said he was going to talk to my husband and that they're drawing blood and I, I'm expecting him to come back at least 
Um, he's like, okay. He left, and I didn't hear anything for another long, long while. Um, until then, another nurse came in with uh, more blood drawing stuff. And she was getting it all ready, and she said sometimes the blood coagulates. I guess it doesn't really matter what I'm explaining, but she was getting ready, and I was like, I don't know what arm you want. I'm, I'm poked in both right now. And she's like, oh, did someone come already? And I said, yeah. And she's like, well, we're just waiting for the blood tests to come in, and then you're going to be discharged. That's what I was told from her. Um, she leaves. She's like, can you pee for me? I go and pee. And then I'm in the room again, just waiting. And nobody's come by for a really long time. And it seems like there's been a shift change. So the nurses that I was, the nurse that I was originally getting handled by was gone. And I got a new nurse. And she's like, I don't know if you're getting um, discharged or not. So now I'm like in this limbo of like, yes, I am. And no, I'm not. Crap. And um, she told me they're just waiting for the test results to come back first. Um, and then, but they'll let you go, but I gotta make sure first. So I was like, that's fine. Um, she left. And, um, yeah, I was sitting there for a while again. They, yeah, they, they really did. Um, and... I know these rooms are meant to keep everyone safe in there, and I completely understand that. Nothing was there to hurt me, nothing was there an option to, and there was a security camera. If anything did happen, somebody would be in there very quickly. Um, but the room can definitely make you feel crazy. <laughs> it, it's... It's... St like, what do you call it? Solitary confinement in prison? Um, so, it wasn't the, no, it just wasn't the best. Um, uh, some doctor came in and said that, um, we're just waiting on labs, and then we'll, we're going to let you go. And I'm like, okay, um, can I get a copy of the labs then? Because I'm going through a lot of doctor changes right now to uh, figure out what's going on with me. So I like to keep um, that type of stuff with me. And they said, yeah, that's fine. Um, uh, I think I waited for another, like, half an hour to an hour. It's so hard, like, to tell time in there. Because you're just sitting there, and all you... I'm just trying to hear if someone's going to open my door. <laughs> if these footsteps come my way, you know? Um... They uh, open the door and uh, they're like, oh, you're getting discharged. Thank fuck at this point. Um, um, oh, we're going to get your paperwork and um, get your stuff. And I was like, okay. So I'm like getting out of the stretcher. I mean, what is it called? Yeah, stretcher thing. And then they close the door on me again. <laughs> So, um, they, they, they come back after a few minutes, um, 
and give me my belongings. I change as fast as I fucking can. And they gave me um, my discharge papers and I asked for is my lab results in these papers and they told me oh you can look at it online and I'm like I would really like a printout and they said okay and I had to sign something um, uh, they let me go and it was <sighs> I don't know I think I was in there for a total of four hours I know I make it seem like I was in there so much longer but it feels long, you know? Like, you don't know... You don't know the time. You don't- you can't see the daylight, you know, like... Any, like, sunlight in there to tell you um, what time it is to get a gauge or anything like that. Um, so... They freed me. I ran to my husband and hugged him because I just wanted to leave. Um, I feel like the only reason why I stayed as long as I did was for the test results, which they never even talked to me about. Uh, they took the test results and there was, you know, some things were high, some things were low whatever um on there and nobody came to say anything uh to me and the packet they gave me for being discharged was pretty much uh talk to your psychiatrist and here's like all this suicidal paperwork to help you if you need to come back kind of thing um the only reason why I'm making this video and sharing this stuff is because I know people out there go through similar shit and uh, you're not alone, <laughs> you know? Life fucking sucks sometimes. Um, but if I can share my story and maybe ease some people's nerves if they're going into a psych ward or know kind of what to expect when they're going in and I'm not saying everyone is the same because it's not obviously um, but I just figured I'd let everyone know it's, it's it's hard but you can get through it you know um so due to this <laughs> um i still will be streaming because it does make me happy um thank you I appreciate it. <laughs> um, I still will be streaming because it does make me happy. But I'm definitely going to give myself um, some limits. Um, uh, so I won't be streaming long streams. Um, probably two to three hours max. Because uh, I need to take more breaks for myself um, things are getting better um, th things will get better um, yeah I, th I think so too yeah I'll take my time um, So, yeah, gotta schedule a lot of appointments now, <laughs> seeing a therapist a lot now, um, maybe seeing new ones on top of that. 
Um, but yeah. Yeah, and I, I know. Thank you. Um. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if there is less or there is none streaming for a bit, I'm just taking a break to um, get better. And I'm hoping it's gonna be soon. <laughs> but you never know. Um, so, this is my story. <laughs> Thank you for listening. Thank you for the support. And I hope that if anyone does feel not themselves and are thinking about these type of thoughts of harm, um, please go in as much as it sounds so scary. When you think about it, it's just a room. <laughs> and they're there to make sure you don't hurt yourself because there's a lot of people that love you and they don't want you gone <sighs> okay so uh, this is it for the end of my stream today thank you for joining me I hope you guys have a good day. <laughs>